Welcome to episode 86 of Stageworthy. I'm your host, Phil Rickaby. Stageworthy features conversations in Canadian theatre with artists of all stripes, from actor to director to playwright and more. My guests this week are Nick May and Jessica Bryson of Theatre Topicos, who are bringing their play Wordplay to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in August. If you're listening for the first time and you like what you hear, I would love it if you'd subscribe to the podcast. You can find Stageworthy on Apple Podcasts, Google Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to drop me a line, I would love to hear from you. You can find Stageworthy on Facebook and Twitter at StageworthyPod, and you can find the website at StageworthyPodcast.com. We were just talking about Edmonton, or Edinburgh, not mm-hmm. Edmonton, and are uh, you taking, uh, the, the show is called... Wordplay. Wordplay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what's Wordplay about? Wordplay is about the power of words and why it's okay to say some words sometimes, but not other times. It lives in a world of comedic realism, like, ultimately, why can I casually call Jess a bitch, but she can't casually call me a faggot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like that light, fun, breezy topic like that. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Those, those, are, it, those are, you know, topics that are not, like, heavy and laden. No, with, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I, don't, I think everyone's fine with it. But no, it's, I, no, I, I, because it came out of, like, very real conversations we had had, fights, drug fights that we'd had in real life. Uh, we've known each other for a long time. And uh, that, you know, it's, uh, I'll just say the language, like, it's about a fag and a fag hag, like, how we became yeah. friends and why... Why in that dynamic, when everyone has language that they don't like, when everyone feels oppressed in some way, why is it, a, like, why do we... Why, why are certain things appropriated, right? Yeah, why? Or okay, okay, right, like, and, and it's all about the times and the moments, and, and we hash it out and have zero... I don't think we can actually have any solutions. No, but, I mean, that's not what it's about. It's about why... I, we didn't the, solve world problems. No, but, <laughs> no, but like, how can these conversations happen with friends? And yeah. maybe this same conversation probably wouldn't happen publicly, even though it kind of does because you're watching the show. But why, like, why is it okay to even bring it up sometimes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's all pretty dark, and we laugh. We think it's funny. It, I mean, it gets a lot of. It, it was, I mean, we got we had pretty great success at. Uh, the International Dublin Gay Theatre Festival mm-hmm. last year. Um, the audiences there were very supportive and appreciative of the show. Very different than Canadian audiences, mm-hmm. which was really interesting. Um, we, because it is, you know, ultimately a conversation between two friends. Um, it is something, and we swear a lot in the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Canadian audiences were like awkwardly laughing about the dirty words that we would use, right? It was shocking for them to hear us, like, go to certain places with those yeah, words right. and, like, you know, throw out cunt, cunt, cunt. And the Irish audiences were so much more invested in... The- how we treated each other and how we, we had a, a straight character that we treat like shit. Mm. A straight male, white male, and we treat him like shit. And they're like, oh, you treat him so bad. Like, they're so <laughs> upset. I think that my favorite thing that I heard about it was that, like, so this third character who's only in it for a hot sack, uh, somebody's like, it's really their Cinderella story. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not the point of the story at all. But lovely. Like, yeah. lovely that that's how they interpreted mm, the show. Yeah. Uh, and that it was so different in different places, which is why it's so exciting for us to bring it to Edinburgh and have, again, a very different audience as well. Still mm. European, but so many people come to Edinburgh to see shows. I'm excited to see what, you know, the whole the audience as a whole thinks of the yeah. show. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, you were saying before we started that the show has sort of like a longer history, not just that Dublin mm. Festival, but you guys have been working on it for a while. So... When did the conversations that you guys were having start turning into a show? So 2014. So the the conversations probably initially started like in 2011, 2011 maybe. Uh, And, you know, over the years we would continually have these conversations as we got together and chatted. And we're both theater people, so it was like... We should write a play. We should write a play. Uh, and there was a festival coming up that we wanted to submit to. I think I approached Jess and I said, there's a festival, let's write a show. This is my kind of initial idea. We sat down, hashed it out. I think we probably initially tried to make it more of a 
more traditional theater piece. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that it became far more interesting when we were just us being us, Mm -hmm. having these conversations. And and it's since evolved and we are now, I mean, almost caricatures of ourselves. (laughs) Uh, Well, and we brought on a great director who was like, this show is about you guys. So he, like we, we break the fourth wall so much more now because he was like, Screw, screw that fourth wall. It doesn't make sense at this part and this part and this part. Break mm-hmm. it because it's not, it doesn't matter. You don't need it. Mm-hmm. Which is great. Yeah. Griffin. Griffin McInnes was our director and he's fantastic. He helped guide the show to a much better place. It's an original formation for the Gay Play Day Festival here in Toronto in 2014. Uh, was a short piece. It was like yeah. 25 minutes long. Uh, and, you know, we sat on it after that, after about a, for about a year and said let's I don't think this story's done and the show lives in a very topical place as well we talk about a lot of you know issues with uh, feminism and LGBT rights and things that are constantly happening in real in our real lives uh, and so the show in each sort of evolution has changed and grown and now it's an hour long one mm-hmm. act uh, and that's kind of where it sits now but still yeah. every time we do it it grows we're excited to change it again to change it to let it grow with I'm this putting new cuck in the show for sure <laughs> yeah. well that is that is that is a word that is uh, uh, very pop- has been very popular over the last <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the right word to say like we've heard that word a lot topical it's, beca- it's yeah. become more topical yeah. Uh, yeah and and we get to make fun of white supremacists by you know yeah <laughs> in the process reclaiming yeah. it fuck those guys um <laughs> So this, this, when you're saying that it was like, you didn't do a lot of, uh, it's not, like not a traditional show, how, can you describe, like if somebody's going to see this show and you're saying it's not a traditional yeah. show, how, how, what can they expect when they... So it's, well, number one, if you come to Edinburgh, which would be the only time you get to see it. <laughs> come to, uh, Ed, come it, to Edinburgh. It will be in a bar. It takes place in a bar mm-hmm. space, which was perfect for us. I don't know if everyone always loves that, but we're like, great, because we actually... Chug a beer off the top uh, and hand out alcohol mm-hmm. as a part of it because it, the whole thing starts like we break time and space. It starts in the now and then we are like, let's go back to that time. And yeah. it's supposed to take place at 4 a.m. So mm-hmm. l- like lighting wise, when you go to the show, it's not... Uh, the lights tra- are on the whole time. The, it's, yeah, it's not traditional <laughs> in the sense of, you know, now the lights are down mm-hmm. and the show yeah. is beginning. <clears throat> Everybody yeah. quiet. Right. It starts with us out in the audience chatting with people yeah. uh, about words and mm-hmm. like... You know, we would start in Dublin with, you know, what's the worst thing somebody's ever called you? Mm. Uh, And then when possible, we threw some of those things into the show as well, uh, which was pretty interesting. Yeah. Do you guys start, are you sitting in the audience? you just like... No. No. They they know that we're, it's our show and we like, like, hey, come on in. Like we had posters where we're like, that says like, what's the worst thing anyone's called you? And it's all very casual and like Mm -hmm. the show has not started yet. And then kind of when we're ready, we get up on stage. We're like, hey, and it starts and then... We we tell our story about why, why we're here, what we're doing. And then kind of it morphs Mm. from that into... The fourth wall and created and now we're back in time right. in that place um, with uh, with allowances for breaks in between yeah it's uh, like time is a lot of less of an issue for like when is this happening is less of an issue for us right. it's like we're using our history to have the conversation but it definitely starts in and out of time space mm-hmm. fourth wall gets broken mm-hmm. yeah in terms of like creating shows do you guys when it, have you created a bunch of shows before or are you is this like your first like show that you've been a, been creating. So this is our first <coughs> collaborative piece together. Mm-hmm. Jess lives in the improv world, so she's always creating <laughs> new things all the time. Yeah. Um, and then for myself, besides things in theater school, uh, growing up, nothing, uh, nothing, I'd say, notable. Mm-hmm. This is our, f- you know, the first thing that we've built from the ground up uh, mm-hmm. as far as a show grows. It goes. Yeah. Did you ever, I mean... We all go through our theater school or whatever that, that, that process is. And when I was in theater school, they never talked about creating your own show or mm-hmm. anything like that. I don't know if you guys found when you were uh, doing that or if you did do that. Were, did, did the idea of creating your own work come up? No. Uh, <coughs> I for sure was already in improv and they were already eye rolling. Uh, but it was like a... And I also had already come from a different kind of theater perspective. My dad was a high school drama teacher, and I was like, I already kind of was like, I had a sense of like, very, very few of us are going to work Shakespeare to Shakespeare, and the rest of us are going to have to learn how to produce and write and create and direct our own shows. 
if we want to work in theater. I, I, and at that point. So at that point, and improv was already all about that. Mm-hmm. So I already had felt like, well, most of us are going to have to do this. And the only other time I had felt like that was um, uh, encouraged was I did, what's it called? Where you make it up. It's not improv, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> Devised? Devised! Theater! Oh my god! Where I was like, this is improv, but I guess we're going to keep it. You know, do it again. you know what I love about Devised Theater? Is it, you should just call it making it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But like, it's become very but like... taking but, it very seriously. It's become very, yeah. it's become very like bougie a because little bit. Yeah. It, it, I was in school, what, 10, <laughs> 10 years ago, 13 years ago, and it was just as bougie. And, it's a devised piece. And I was like, this is improv, but we're going to keep on doing it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, um, you know, it was... Can, it, I, it, can yeah. I jump in and ask you a little bit about the eye roll about improv? Oh, is that, yeah. Is that... Um, <laughs> so Bitch! Did you, you, like, walk in and you were like... I I do, I've been doing improv for five years and everybody was like oh my god well, I had come from I went to an arts high school and then I, I came from theater background really mm-hmm. um, and then started doing improv and loved it like I was like oh I think there's a misconception about what it is people are taught it really poorly and mm-hmm. watch bad improv like I think it's that's what it is well no because it's like yeah, it's if your only concept is that one thing you saw at that bar that one time or that one improv class mm-hmm. that your acting teacher taught you mm-hmm. and you did you know park bench for an hour and you're like this sucks or or I watch whose line is it anyway yeah in the 90s yeah. and you're like and that's it and uh, and yeah if that's all you have then I can see why you'd be like it's hacky but but also, there's like a there. People love to take themselves so seriously, and I, that was the worst in theater school. I, mm. I found, um, and it was like, well, drama is where it's at, and I'm like, well, then why is comedy so hard, and why is, why are you so scared of it? Mm. So I think the eye roll, for the most part, came out of fear, yeah. a fear of doing it, and then a genuine like disconnect from not really knowing what it is. Yeah. Because um, in my in my experience, having done it, you know, for well over a decade now. Um, it's it's theater and it's and it's it's lo- most people don't know what long form is like you've seen the work that I do it's like plays we improvising yeah. plays um, and most people couldn't do that and the dance between drama and comedy is so real and ev- there's no comedy that doesn't have drama inside of it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's, it's so different as well. Like the, and I think that there's a learning for even within the arts within the theater community. I mean, there's improv as a tool within what we do, and then there's improv yeah. as, a, yes. as its own art, right? And this is something that I think there's a big divide yes. in. But there was a very odd, it was very heavy eye roll, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, you're doing that. Like, it was the only thing, you know how, like, in drama programs, they're like, you cannot do a play outside of the program. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But they're like, oh, improv, do whatever you want. Like, <laughs> it's like very, like, hey, yeah, whatever. But it, like, it was very dismissed. I wasn't allowed to do improv when I was in school. You didn't even try. Um, <laughs> Did you guys go to the same theater school? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Which theater school? I went theater? to UBC and okay. then I, I didn't do the. Um, I, I guess I started in the, the traditional acting Program? stream and then I went and did just a theater degree. Mm-hmm. I went to an acting conservatory in New York okay. called AMDA, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that was my experience. I mean, in my experience there, just back to your original <laughs> yeah. question about, um, you know, were we told or encouraged to do our own work? I mean, it was always said, but never explained. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, you know, when you, and this is, I know it's a different place. It's New York. There's a lot more theater, but also a lot more people there. Um, so it was, you know, you're, it's going to be difficult to find work. So, you know, what you should do is create your own work. And there was a full stop there. There was no explanation of, um, like, how do you create your own work? Where do you start? What do how you do? How do you produce? How do you produce? Oh Isn't that, that's like the, that's like the million, if, if theater schools would start teaching that stuff, we would have, like... It's like, you know what? How come in high school we didn't learn how to do our taxes? And what was <laughs> yeah, the point of all yeah, of it? Right? Yeah, but it's like, like it's teach true. me some life skills, not what's yeah. sine and cosine in yeah. math class. <laughs> I still can't remember. I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, but yeah. it's, it's funny. When I was in theater school in... 90-something. Um, <laughs> like, the whole idea of producing your work was, like, for if you weren't going to make it. Mm. Like, what is... Ma- but it was like, yeah, it was but like, of course that know, was maybe, when there was government maybe, funding and, like, yeah. you know... But it was all, like, maybe, you know, okay, maybe, you know, you could, you know, you're going to go to your audition, you're going to do Shakespeare, you do Stratford, you do this sort of thing. Or, you know, if you're doing solo work, or, you're, you know, you do the, the Fringe <laughs> Festival or something. Yeah. But it was never, like... You could always do the fringe. Yeah, you could always do the fringe. Like, pat on the pat on the back. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was like, and now it's like these are essential parts yeah. of 
Because I have friends yeah. that are very successful actors, um, unlike us, and uh, <laughs> like book TV, and you know, or or I have no. You were, people. In, a, you were in a commercial. <laughs> they cut me out. That's true. Uh, but they still had to pay me, so I think I really success, success. I won that That's commercial. Check mark. Success. Um, no, but they still, you know, they're, they they even my agent. I have a great agent, and they're just like, yeah. Every now and then, you need to go back and do a play, or yeah. go and do Fringe, or like, re- especially in Toronto. I think there's nothing wrong with like just reconnecting with mm-hmm. some aspect of live work yeah. or whatever, and reminding yourself that. And, and my agent loves that I do improv. They're like, because now that is a huge mm-hmm. part of at least for television and film yeah. and commercial work. So not necessarily for traditional theater, but for that work, they're like, and we want an improv funny type or a yeah. comedy type or can you improvise these lines or they'll give you a scenario and not the words and they yeah. want to know that you can like live in it and so it's funny because now that that skill is mm-hmm. uh, is important for that stuff but I, I think it's kind of in who's who's making it like yeah. no, that's, you know like I mean, what that is, is that question, like right? yeah. and it's all about definition of what is success in the yeah. business mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I think, you know, when I was in, in theater school, this success was work consistently or, you know, get a bunch of jobs in a year. And mm-hmm. that was like, I mean, that's still job, success now. <laughs> that's still success. <clears throat> but it was never, there, were, there weren't alternate right. streams that were talked yeah. about. I think now people are talking about self-producing, but never really about how. Yeah. Because it's really hard. Well, and yeah. it's taken me, mm-hmm. or like, after graduating from theater school... It, it took me a long time before I started actually doing it, because especially without having those tools readily available. It was like, yeah. like I, I know I want to do things, but where do I start? And you put it off, and you put it off, and you put it off, because it's it's hard. Yeah. And then now, finally, in the past few years, is where we're finally making it happen. And mm-hmm. I think we as me and Jess, but... But then also, too, you have to decide, and I, and I struggle with this, so I don't have the answer, but it's like, what... What is success for you, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. like for us, like talking about Edinburgh, like I was <coughs> pretty reluctant to do it because I had heard horror stories about losing money, mm-hmm. um, uh, and I didn't, I didn't want to lose a bunch of money. But it was like, you know, do we think we're going to get famous for doing this? Which is very much so a reason why a lot of people do Edinburgh. I do not think that. No, you never no. know. But that's not but why we're going. I, yeah. I can guarantee you, we won't. No, you never know. But that's not why we're doing it. And it was like, we're doing it because it's an, an adventure. It's an adventure. We yeah. both, we both. I mean, and just going back to even the evolution of this show really mm-hmm. quickly, this was like super exciting for Jess because this was stepping out of her improv world yes, and into going back to scripted, going back to scripted <laughs> work, which is yeah. something that she was terrified about at yes. first. Uh, for me, I, I live in it and I was like, You're, it's fine. Um, <laughs> and, and then... I'll talk about me doing improv things afterwards, but like how that's my like level of comfort isn't there. Whereas, yeah. but we balance each other out in that way because yeah. of it. Um, I digress. No, but it, yeah, but why? What is success when us for us doing this is doing it? Is yeah. doing it is yeah. is like Taking going the out risk there and doing it, and like, hopefully people like it and we get good reviews. Yeah, and, and after doing it in Dublin, <clears throat> we I mean we saw that there was something really exciting about bringing it to a new audience. And, mm-hmm. and I say a new audience because I think that's a challenge sometimes in Toronto theater mm-hmm. um, is that we, we live in these like cyclical art circles sometimes. And if it's not your family and friends, who are you really reaching out to, to get to see your show? Yeah. And so having truly unique people coming to see our show in another country is so exciting. We both love travel as well. So yeah. um, it's like win, win, win as far as going and doing the show there. Was the run in Dublin, was that, was it several shows? Was it, yeah, uh, it was t- <laughs> 10. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, ten, yeah, it was like shows? a week, like every night for a week and two Mondays. That's a, that's a yeah. good number. I think of... over two, I don't know, it was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a, it wasn't it like Saturday to Saturday kind of a thing. Maybe, with a, maybe with, with two matinees. Yeah, that was. I mean, that's a that's a pretty good run. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. for going to another country and doing yeah. a show, you don't want to just go and do it once or twice. No, like, of course not. You want to like not. let yourself live into it yeah. and let it grow still while you're there, yeah. and, like trying out a new space. Yeah, and we got great reviews and people liked it. We didn't get huge crowds because mm-hmm. we were trying. We were competing with very Irish plays, <laughs> for, <laughs> and it was during. The uh, hundred year anniversary of the rebellion and stuff, and so there was a play mm. about Oscar Wilde. There was a play about um, about the rebellion, about the oh. rebellion, and, and was... about the, it was the one year anniversary of the referendum of the of gay, uh, marriage. gay marriage. And so there was a play so about we were that. Competing so we were with a lot, competing against a lot there of really some, some Irish, very, things. Very Irish things. Yeah, yeah but, but, but we did still have. But we felt very good and, about what we, I think, put into it and got out of it at the end. Yeah. What was your What was your your goal like? 
you know, you're not in this, you know, doing it in Edinburgh to get famous. What was uh, what was it going to Dublin? Was it to do it in that in front of that different audience, or was it like what was? Your... Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like. Um initially uh when and it's always nick comes to me because i will never find these things because i'm (laughs) too afraid to make these things happen so he's like we're doing this thing i've signed us up i think it's actually how the conversation (laughs) and uh for sure ireland i think was because he's uh his partner is irish it was how can i get a free trip to ireland (laughs) because i think the initial not a free trip but like how how can how can you know justify how can i justify going to ireland and Um, seeing my family but then it became i'm gonna give us the secondary um it was really and it was fascinating and we learned so much by doing it it was what what is actually the value of this show? Because mm-hmm. we do believe in it, and we do really enjoy it. And then it became really an on the spot. Like we did one show, and we're like, we have to change our marketing. We have to like we got we had to get new posters. We had to right. get new like it was like nope, this doesn't work. And it was like Canadian audiences and Irish uh-huh. are completely different, which was quite exciting actually. Yeah. Like it was like uh, like getting there the first night, explaining our show, having these things, and we're like, wow, what what attracts Canadians to uh, especially mm-hmm. queer mm-hmm. feminist theater comedy? is very different than what attracts Irish. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, for sure. Yeah. This is my boyfriend coming in with groceries. Are you going to cut this out of the podcast or are we going to keep on using We're going to keep on going. Honestly, yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah. just so the, pe- the <coughs> listeners uh, understand, um, my boyfriend's really good and he went grocery shopping. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that was really exciting about Ireland. I don't think that was our initial thoughts, feelings, or concern when we went there. No. Like, I think we kind of, I was like, I don't know, like, what is gonna, what is it gonna be like? But mm. it was fascinating. It was like, we should have honestly just had cunt talks to fag on <laughs> on the card, and people have been like, I'm gonna be there. Like, that would have been enough. It was, yeah, it was, I, one of the really interesting, exciting things about the Irish audiences is they if they say they're gonna come, they come. And I, I didn't believe it at first, but I originally reached out to Rob Salerno because he had a show that went I think twice mm-hmm. two shows that went to that same festival and I asked him for a little bit of advice and he said, you know, you have to get out there and talk to people in the streets and tell them to come to your show, otherwise they won't. I was like, Okay. That that's that's always the case with any type of fringe. But he was like, If they say they're gonna come, they will show up. Hmm. And I was like, Okay, sure. And it happened, it worked. I mean we, we were, were out at bars. Out at this because it was it's a queer festival. And so we were like the fun Canadian, what, the, what anyone at home can't tell us, like, Nick and I are about the same height and we're very loud and very sassy. You're like two feet shorter than me. <laughs> not, 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 not the same height uh, at all. But uh, we had this very fun dynamic at these, there's two, essentially two gay bars and we would like corner people and talk to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there was like several people that like in Ireland, you forget how fucking small Ireland is. So they're like from, you know, Cork or Kerry, like driving into Dublin to the only gay bars right. and they're like we will we will come and then they did and they would mm. drive there's someone from Northern Ireland who like was like I'm coming like and, and I was they like did. no you and crossed that international border it was an hour away that's, but like did it that's <laughs> not saying that they were the they're going to do what they that if they say they're coming because you know yeah I mean sometimes you've been at a French festival you say sure I'm going to be at your show and you're like oh my God, that's my it, way of yeah. making them stop talking to me <laughs> like yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah I'll be there yeah, I'll be there <laughs> um just to jump uh, to a different topic for for a second, I'm curious about. We talked a little bit about about your your background uh, yeah. and your dad being a, a, a theater teacher. Um, I want Nick. I want to talk a little bit about about your background, what brings you to theater. But I'm also curious about um, if your folks were behind the idea of you pursuing theater as a as a career. Oh. Ooh. Because um, you know, it's one thing to yeah, have a, my a parents dad are, who's teaching theater and high yes. school. Another thing to. Um, I think uh, my parents are very supportive. I'm very, very lucky. Um, I think my mom cringes at our lack of a pension on a <laughs> daily basis. Yeah. Um, my 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 partner just got us medical, and she's like, oh, "Okay, well, <laughs> like, you, can to, you can go to the dentist." Like. You know, like she saw a big. I think that's tough, like because I yeah. think being an educator is a much more, much more steady mm-hmm. life, um, in a lot of ways. But I, I think my dad is like living vicariously through us. Like I think, I think he, yeah, they're very supportive. They love you. They <laughs> love my parents. Love Nick and Martin, who is his partner, and I think they're like, go do it. Like they're very mm. like, go do it, do it now. When when else? 
when else is there to do these things? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I think all in all, very supportive. I think my mom struggles with the why of it sometimes, but like in the most like, well, go do it thing. And I think my dad would, if we said, Hey, Neil Bryson, do you want to come play a part in our show? He'd be like, when, where I'll see you. Like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? So I, I think I'm quite lucky for that. Um, and also my dad taught me, so mm. I'm like pretty well trained. <laughs> when, when you say that your mom struggles with the why, is that the why of why do you have to do this or is that? She would never do it. She's right. like terrified of public speaking, mm-hmm. um, although very funny and loud. So I don't know where that's coming from, but like <laughs> she, she wouldn't make those choices. Right. So in the sense of like anything that you're like, I don't. Like, I struggle with the why of a corporate life or being a corporate lawyer. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I get it. You make a lot of money, but, like, like, why? (laughs) You live in Newmarket? Like, why? Like, I was doing a corporate uh, teaching improv in Aurora yesterday, and I was like, ugh. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you live here? But not, not to judge or anything. Not to Well, no, but it's like, you know, people judge art, artists for it's, the exact yeah, same thing all the true. time. And it's I think it's just, you can support it and get it, but you can't get it because it's not something mm-hmm. you, you yourself would want. Right. Um, so I think that's really kind of her only struggle is it's not something that she would have ever chosen for right. herself. Mm-hmm. Um, not even that she necessarily, not that there's such thing as truly as a straight and narrow. I think we all have hard careers and hard choices. And yeah. one, you know, the, the freedom I feel is then the shackle of not making the money. Like, you right. know what I mean? Like the structure of this is the lack of money for that mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. the freedom of this is the not free. You know, like it's all hard yeah. choices, but that's, I honestly, I can't complain about my parents. They're, they're very supportive people. Cool. Yeah. Nick, why did you choose the theater? Oh, <laughs> why? Um, so, I don't know. My family themselves are not theater people. Mm. Um, but you're the baby boy and they love you. And they yeah. You and but I've always had some, like, I've always been interested in entertaining. My, like, earliest memory of doing it was I used to memorize commercials <laughs> when I was, like, five years old. And I remember my aunts and uncles coming over and my mom and dad being like, do it. Do, do the commercial. And I did this commercial and they were all, because I said it verbatim, and they were all laughing and I had no idea why. And it was years later that I found out that I was quoting an OB commercial. <laughs> um, and then I, I think the first kind of creative thing that I put my energy into, was I was in eighth grade and I, I wanted to, I was obsessed with Charlie Brown Christmas mm-hmm. and I did a staged version for the kindergarten kids. Not me, not just me. I like fully staged it mm-hmm. and like transcribed it from the actual uh, show itself and we performed it for the kindergarten kids and they loved it and that kind of just kept on fueling the fire and so I would do some community theater and then high school theater and then after that I was like I you know go big or go home so I went to New York City and spent Mm -hmm. a billion dollars on tuition for school uh, and then came back to Canada and had like ins and outs of theater because I was caught between corporate life stuff and trying Mm -hmm. to pay off massive loans from going to school in New York uh, and then little bits and bobs and now I'm living a more creative life today mm-hmm. my family's still very supportive um, I mean they, they do and don't get it because mm-hmm. they're like u- union type people or like you're like Jess said with like pensions and mm-hmm. you know you're, you want something that you're working towards that is going to have financial stability but they've come to yeah. understand and accept and realize that I'm doing exciting things and I'm doing well for myself and I do yeah. lots of odd types of jobs with and without theater. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think at this point now they're excited about it. They're excited to hear when I tell them the new interesting thing that I'm doing. Yeah. Do you remember what the fir- your first inkling of what theater was? My first inkling of what theater <clears throat> was. Did you go to see a show? Is that because you know the idea of like performing a play mm-hmm. for your classmates comes from somewhere? Yeah, I don't I don't have a a strong memory of it. I'm sure like there was probably some school field mm. trip somewhere uh to see something, but I don't actually no, I lie. I lie <laughs> fully. It's it's all coming back to me. Um I had my my brother-in-law's sister used to work for Stage West in Mississauga. Okay. Um and they do theater there. Mm-hmm. Um and I remember seeing the first show that I ever remember seeing there was a musical version of Jack and the Beanstalk. And I saw it and I loved it and I used to remember singing the songs afterwards. I was about to do it. I'm not going to. Um, (laughs) 
I still remember some of the words to them, and that's the first thing mm-hmm. I remember ever seeing. That's like pre, you know, my award-winning Charlie Brown production. Um, and I guess maybe that's the thing that I realized that theater was. Mm. My aunt took me to see Phantom when I was mm. five. Oh, what? I scandalous! I only remember the chandelier. Well, yeah, well, that's something. I mean, that's the that's, that's the, the chandelier the mask. Yeah, but my dad, my dad was a. I knew my dad directed plays, like because mm-hmm. that's what he did. But From, when I got the job when I was three. So theater was always. Had you seen plays before Phantom, or was that was Phantom? That was the big, the big first play I saw. (laughs) But like, I remember my dad put on Guys and Dolls when I was like four. But did you see it, or was just that? Dad went to work with Guys and Dolls. I don't know. Like I remember, you know, when you have like young memories that you're, it's hard to remember if it's actually a memory or if it's a picture of a memory. Mm -hmm. So I can't remember if I actually saw it. Or if I remember seeing like a video of it, mm, yeah. But I, but I knew what Dad did. Dad directed mm. high school student plays. Like that's what Dad. Yeah. But I was so young. Memories get weird when you get older. Yeah, well, because that don't you don't your memories start becoming memories of the memories? So yeah. it's hard yeah, to yeah. remember. Like, is if that's act like when you're like, oh, and then this happened, and it was like, you, there's no way for you to remember it's that. Very it's, no. it's the things that people have told you that the you things remember. that you think you remember. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny because you know we all have uh, you know my my parents have opened I've always been, you know, to make sure, you know, take care of yourself, make sure that you're, you know, the job, you know, I hate this job, it's destroying my soul. But, you know, it's a means to an end. Like, what is the end? What is the end? What is the end? <clears throat> and for them, it's like retirement. And it's like there, you know, there's this whole, like, generation of do the job that you hate until you turn 60. Then you get a pension and then you can do what you like. Yeah, yeah, but I, when I, when I'm, when I'm, you, oh, yeah, I was going to say, if anything, what you should do is turn what you love into a job mm-hmm. so you start to hate it. And then <laughs> get another job that has a pension. Uh, mm-hmm. Life Lessons by Jess Bryson. Yeah, and, then, and then die alone. But like, I want to, when I'm 60, I want to, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I might be poor then, but I'll remember going to fucking Edinburgh yeah. and performing yeah. for strangers when I was in my early 30s. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's something that I look forward to, right? Honestly, World War Three is coming. It doesn't who knows? Who knows? What 60, I will say that um, Jess said something earlier about you know now is the time for us to go and do this. Mm-hmm. And I remember when we were in Dublin performing, we met with my partner's uncle who uh, performs, and he said to us, he was like, "Do it." Like we said, we were like, yeah, we might go to Edinburgh. He's like, do it. Like, there's no reason not to. He was like, you'll regret it if you don't. Like, if you have the opportunity, fucking take it. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And it was like for for him to, you know, who's had a career and a life like doing theater and other other jobs as well, for Mm -hmm. him to give that advice to us, I was like, yeah, like, why, why would we not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here we go. (laughs) <laughs> when I mean there's something to be said for when you're doing a show at home and you do have your family and friends to come see that show you hope that more people than just your family and friends are going to come to well, see you realize show. who your true friends are And but then when you go away from that and you're like in just away from home and where it's comfortable um, what's it like being in a strange place where you really don't know that many people and trying to get them to come to your show. I think for me, it's A, exciting, but B, I've got nothing to lose. So to be silly in front of somebody yeah. and be like, come see our show! I'm never going to see that person again. Yeah. I don't care what they think of me. In they're they're going to see this. it's also easier because you kind of had a point, if you perform enough, where they're like, yeah, okay, I'll see your show. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, and it's, and it becomes hard to convince those people. Like, whereas, you know, I've never seen it before. I've never seen Canadians. A lot of people had never seen Canadians perform yeah. before or, well, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, you know, dazzling sure. and exotic. Yeah. Exotic <laughs> uh, Canadian. Yeah. Like, yeah, and like, who knows? Like, and also what we did before is not, like, I'm curious to see with Edinburgh, it's a whole other beast. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. it really is. Yeah. It's not the same as what we did in, in Dublin. Different culture, different mm-hmm. expectations, different amount of people. Different stakes as different well. Different stakes. Yeah. Like, there's more people, but then there's more shows, and there's yeah. more, like, impetus to, like, like everyone's, like, hustling, hustling, hustling. Um, whereas this was like we just kind of had to show up at the same two gay bars every every night and be like come see the show there was more gay bars we just didn't go to them Jess well we went to the two anyway <laughs> um, but yeah whereas this is a little it's like harder but also mm. easier because in this we're a part of the free fringe end of the Canada 150 so there's mm-hmm. like a 
people are promoting for us on some right. regard. Um, and we learned a lot about promoting ourselves from doing it previously yeah, as well. So yeah, it's more about point. Like I like yeah, it's less about flooding everything with like yeah. handbills. It's more about being like. Please come, like, hey. Just ha- you, having those more meaningful, like, discussions and conversations. Like, yeah. handing, handing somebody a postcard, unless it's a really intriguing postcard, but, like, handing somebody a postcard is not as effective as, you know, talking to somebody about what makes your show fucking great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, who knows? Like, who knows? We might perform to nobody for half the time we're there, and we might. Perform get, for everyone. Like, perform, like, we might be sold out every single time. Yeah. We. I think the thing for us is like we quite legitimately might make no money and just lose money. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do, but yeah, it, yeah, it won't be a yeah. ton. We've done we've structured it in a way that we're not going to lose a ton. It'll just be a really expensive vacation where we got to perform if that's yeah. the yeah. case, and that's fine. Yeah, um, we actually just did. I mean, every show has its own different way of fundraising. I would say that I would mention that we just did one last week, May fourth. We had an event called Shit Show. It was a queer comedy night, which was a fundraiser for. Uh, us going to Edinburgh and it speaking this is a segue because mm-hmm. it's a separate thing but we now saw the success of that and are going to start a monthly shit show here in the city mm-hmm. as well um, just in terms of you know what we're doing as a collective together and building communities artistically whether it be locally or internationally mm. so, something else we're doing yeah yeah mm. Mm. We also might lose a bunch of money. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Is this this is this is both of you either your first time doing Edinburgh? Oh yeah. yeah. And the last time. So probably. how do you I mean, in terms of preparing to do it, not just like the financial aspect, but like going to Edinburgh, which is, you know, the biggest festival in the world. Yeah. How what kind of game plan do you have to go in with? Well we had meeting well so we've met with some people that we know that had successful uh, free for Inch show mm-hmm. last year to kind of get some sense of a game plan and yeah. it sounds like from that we've kind of gathered some things like you just can't bring your same old poster like it's got to be like has star ratings on it and stuff like stuff like what you wouldn't yeah. necessarily so, do here so, so there's that plan mm-hmm. like there's we're re-upping on our promotional material mm-hmm. so it is more effective and we've just we've met and talked to as many people as we can that we know mm-hmm. within our own networks that have done it but what yeah. to expect what to do what does work what doesn't work yeah. um, and different people have been very helpful in that way mm-hmm. uh, which has been great um, and then secondly to that doing the things that we always do for any type of production anywhere uh, even if it's local like figuring out what our budgets look like and mm-hmm. and all the fun stuff yeah yeah uh, in terms of promotion like not having the same old poster um, but like you got out on the street uh, hawking the show it's a little bit different I've heard than like doing the Toronto Fringe or even like Edmonton Fringe yeah it's very uh, you have to have a hook yeah yeah and we like and especially what we've learned from Ireland is mm-hmm. we have to be more rude mm-hmm. <laughs> like because our show is rude and it's a dark comedy and mm-hmm. it's at night and it's in a bar for a reason we drink we drink on stage we drink real alcohol on stage um no yeah. what, no that's like no it's not a secret i'm just it's, fishing for fun it's um, not a secret and like it like to a point where there was times when i'm like maybe we should switch it up for juice like, I'm thinking, like <laughs> no, we tried juice juice is not the answer because we ch- like we Polish off, we polish off a bottle of wine in the show, and the juice gives me so much gut rot. It's not yeah. worth it. Um, just and that goes back to what you had asked, or what had, you had asked earlier about what makes it not traditional, yeah. uh, and keeping it alive and like allowing it to be fluid and change and stuff like that. And you know, getting having a little bit of alcohol on stage helps yeah. with that. I mm. think. I think, and not being afraid of doing it. But as you know well. what? Too, I actually think it makes it more dangerous. Like you know, you talk about the excitement For of sure. improv. There's danger in improv, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and. I think a lot of traditional quote unquote theater would be like, oh, it's grape juice or water and purple dye or whatever. And we're like, no, no, like, our, we're drinking a bottle of wine yeah. on stage. That's tucked in my butt for like the first 10 minutes of the show. It's, it, you were talking about like breaking the fourth wall. Hmm. And so are you, like, not just breaking the fourth wall, are you like making eye contact, talking to people? Do you go out and, and like. At the beginning of the show, we do. At the beginning, mm-hmm. we're talking directly to the audience. Yeah. Um, and then after that, it, there's a shift, and it's mm-hmm. not a clear shift. It's not a, a lighting or a sound cue shift. It's a shift. In the way that we're talking to each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when we stop with 
that okay. and, and shift. And it's something that is, I mean, uh, cr- critiques and comments that we've gotten from people out, that have seen the show. It's like, oh yeah, I, d- I didn't know. Like if you, if like this was just an intro or what was happening still. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like, that's what we wanted from you. We wanted, yeah. we wanted you to, to be unsure. We yeah. wanted you to, to question that. Right. And yeah. that was a choice. Yeah. And we do have a third character that doesn't say anything, mm-hmm. um, who can't come to the festival. So we're um, reworking that. So we might like, also make that an audience member. Like they might not know that they're. Playing. Is he? Is he like? Is the guy? He doesn't say anything at all. Is he on stage with <laughs> the thing, or is he? So <laughs> so it's actually played by uh, the guy with the groceries mm-hmm. earlier. Um, it's the one straight uh, male character, and it's actually the whole show is based around where we met, which was a job, a twenty four hour restaurant that we started working at and there was one person we genuinely really didn't like that we and we worked with a couple like this. yeah we melded a couple people we didn't like into one character <laughs> who we shit on we're like bad people like we're good people <laughs> like we're good friends but we're also we kind oh, of yeah, play yeah. shitty villains in it yeah and we treat him like shit and he's like this straight character who we just kind of honestly spent most he doesn't say anything he spends most of uh, the play us just treating him like shit right. and so he yeah he, and then he, he has one beautiful speech about language and um, privilege at the end and then we tell them to fuck off off. Uh, but yeah we might make an audience member read that (laughs) yeah so we're reworking that (laughs) piece of the show now yeah but because it's a it's a fun counterpoint to this is I think we don't think that there is a right and wrong answer in the Mm -hmm. end of this when it comes to language and friends and comfortability but that it is changing and growing Um, and I think that's how we play that out and the realm of the fourth wall I certainly did shows where I looked directly at someone in the mm-hmm. eyes because we're having a show and it's just like I see you there and because it's a it's it's scripted but there is always m- m- room for improv yeah. in our show and I like mm-hmm. that we don't have a light change like the house lights are up for it yeah like we have them on at half when people come in we leave them that way mm. the stage lights are on and we leave them that way because I think we like the idea that like no no this is yours this is ours we're all here right mm-hmm. now we mm-hmm. brought you into our memory yeah um and but we also asked you for yours and we get right. into a big fight at the end and people have told us words and we put them in at the end. We change up the words that we call each other um, mm. because we can. Yeah. And so we do. <laughs> and then we leave by walking off the stage and then we come back on for the bow. But then, yeah, it's... We, we were we're bouncing around a lot, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, <laughs> this is the way we talk. This is what we do. Yeah. Back to really quickly, you were talking about like marketing and like doing the show and how we're going to kind of try to intrigue people while we're there in Edinburgh as well is, and this is something we started doing in Dublin, is having uh, interactive posters. So posters that people were writing on and people were engaging with. So right. so they would have questions like, what's the most hurtful thing anybody's ever said to you? What's the like thing that only a friend can call you? Or And different posters that said different things. And when people would come into our space, or if we just had the posters up somewhere and we were there, we would ask people, we'd have Sharpies with us, and we'd say, like, write on them. Mm. So we're going to play with that idea a little bit in Edinburgh as well in promoting the show. And I mean, maybe that'll be... T-shirts. Yeah, we'll have t- T-shirts where people can write those things on us in the streets as well. Mm. Um, so we're we're playing with mm. that way of yeah. of enticing people to see the show. Nice. Yeah, I always find that the the to get back to that that breaking the fourth wall thing. Um, I did a show last summer where my director was like, "Okay, so you this is just you, and you're talking to the audience. So you're gonna have to like talk to them, so make eye contact with them." And as somebody who was trained, you know, not to, not to. Yeah. That was like a terrifying, like the idea of like, okay, so now I'm going to talk to this person specifically. I'm going to look them in the eye. And the first time I did it, I could not do it. I, I had to look. It. It's such them. a, it's so powerful, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, like, well, especially yeah. from an improviser's perspective, yeah. and I, I like, uh, I do a lot of hosting of improv shows. There's something about like looking someone in the eyes and being like, don't fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't fuck with yeah. my show. Um, or like, this is you. Like, it's, it's quite powerful. Mm. And it is scary, but I think... I think like all scary things, what you get to the other side and realize there's power in that scary thing. It it's uh, and it does really. You can sense the audience goes. <gasps> yeah, well, that's that's one thing that I found is the first time because it was my first time ever performing it. It was terrifying to look somebody in the eye. The second show, when I gotten over that shit and I was able to look people in the eye, it was just like this feeling between like me and them, like mm-hmm. seeing them, which was which was new. Yeah. yeah. For this show, the reason why it, it wasn't daunting to me, and I feel the same thing as far as like theater experience and training and everything like that, that's like, you don't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and for this show, because it starts with us already talking to the audience mm-hmm. members, and because there's no shift, 
And because at the beginning we are playing ourselves and telling our story, mm-hmm. it feels very natural and good in our show to do that. Additionally, like one big challenge, and again, this is like goes back to theater and training and all that stuff, is our, and this was a major note from our director, is at the beginning, because we are us, don't be on and don't be like mm. performing it. Just talk. Which is just so talk. That's just hard. Do, that just is, talk. It's to. hard because we, we are, are always on. on. Like, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. when we're together. I realized this. We did this that show recently, and I had people from my other life, my improv life, coming. So people who know you from different perspectives, yeah, yeah. in different places, and I'm like, oh my god, I talk differently when we're next to each other. Not necessarily we're having a coffee, but like when people are around us with yes. the potential of them laughing at us, I, we talk differently. Yes, we do. And it's like it's like fast. It's, it's really and it's on and it's like I become sassier or you become sa- like everything's just a little bit more heightened so it's actually work for us to like reel it in it's the hard part is like what's the natural version of that that's we become not Will and Grace. we how become Will and Grace in the worst way possible how do you how do you figure out like how do you go from oh do you like realize how do you realize that you're being on and then pull you, that back you, you know you know, you know when you've allowed yourself to become just a little bit too much like it's the 1930s <laughs> and we're all gonna put on a show like yeah and I, I think it's it's uh, it's reminding yourself that the tone of your voice mm-hmm. you've allowed yourself a tone that mm-hmm. is fun and you're getting like you have you know what it is you know the, the, the old saying follow the fun you actually kind of have to stop doing that you have okay. to be like if I follow the fun to the end point, which is like my ego satisfaction of laughter, mm-hmm. I'm going to actually take away from the further point, which is the reality. Of yeah. it. So mm-hmm. I need to like pull it back. And it, yeah, it's really nice though, to really live in that realism yes. mm-hmm. when you do find that place and you do escape from the performing and the on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it does feel really good to look audience members in the eyes and connect. Yeah. It's gotta be really hard though to like go from, <clears throat> you know, cause we, as performers, we we have that. This is what we do. Yeah, we perform, and then to you know have to <clears throat> pardon me, be just yourself, mm-hmm. which can be a very difficult thing. Yeah, well, especially when well, that's why we of this is why we act right. We don't yeah. want to be ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then of course we're playing ourselves. <laughs> we, we are playing ourselves six years ago. Six years ago and heightened, and but... And heightened, but also it only were... It, six years ago, specifically drunk in the middle of the night, angry, <laughs> uh, but having a good time. Mm. Like, it's it's that weird thing of it's, it's acting, but it's capturing a time, but also we start... And when you're playing a host self, right, yeah. you're a little bit more heightened so it's like trying to then know that if you if you go too far in your host self you'll have a hard time connecting to your real self that you're also playing (laughs) that you're going to turn into in the past so it's a good acting challenge too because then you are asking the question is like who am i who am i in that time you Mm -hmm. know what it is still a character but it's a character of you at a time and a space having a very specific kind of conversation um but also it's intimate but also we're supposed to be at work God, it's a really, lot of layers. It's really, it's really weird for friends who have seen the show who are like, you guys are awful. And we're like, it, it's not yeah. really us. It's kind of us. <laughs> but maybe we are a little bit awful. But everybody's awful. Yeah. yeah. But also we do address that in the show. Like we it is do. like the worst version of ourselves, which is like not only did this workplace make us the worst version of ourselves, but you know, it time is that place. time <laughs> place. But it also is that version of yourself that you're like, no, I'm allowed to be bad because I'm exhausted and I'm right. drunk and I'm in charge. Right. <laughs> so I'm allowed to be a little weird little dictator in this. Which also, which show. also in the show allows us to have the the conversations that we yeah. have, right? Yeah. Which comes kind of full circle. Yeah. Now earlier we were talking about the difference between performing this show for a Canadian audience who get hung up on the bad words, yeah, and mm-hmm. the Dublin audience that really sort of paid attention to the relationship between you. Yeah, it was so <clears throat> fascinating because I when we did it in, we did it for we did a preview for um, the people that work at the theater that I work at. And Say the name of it. The Bad Dog Theater Company. <laughs> Surprise Angel Theater in uh, Toronto here. Uh, and That's so weird. I whatever. And um, my friend we, I, we have these anecdotes at the beginning and I was like, oh these bitches. No, and we call them basic bitches. Basic bitches. And she was like Bitches seemed really like harsh language. And <laughs> I say that in Ireland, they're like, yeah, there are bitches. Like, they're just like so comp, like, bitches is nothing, mm. cunts is nothing. Yeah, even, yeah. Like, even just the, absolutely the things we would say to our, each other in the show, like, afterwards, people were like, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I felt about it. Like, you calling Jess a cunt so much. Whereas in Ireland, like, I remember somebody coming up like, you know, I've had these same conversations with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> with my cunty friends. Like, it was yeah. like... Yeah. But where... Yeah, yeah, whereas they got so much more caught up that we were... We... We're got, being mean. We were being mean, and we were mm. being mean to this other person, but also mean... Like, we get mean to each other. Like, at a certain point, we get into a real fight... Where we're, we start but, trying to hurt each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's good that they felt and saw those things, right? Because like, yeah, this yeah. is what that the show is about, right? It's like, yeah. like, why do words have power? Why, yeah. like... Why did it not matter in one part, but then now it's switched? Mm-hmm. But also, like, I think, like, there's a pivotal point in our fight where I call him a faggot. Mm-hmm. And that got a... <gasps> in Toronto. Remember that point? Yeah. Like, it was like... <gasps> I can't believe she's... The fight so has happened. The straight woman has called her gay friend a faggot. Like, right. it's... And he's, and like, we've said awful things, and I think I call him a faggot at a different point in the play. But because it, it's, But it's not a fight, so right. it doesn't matter. And this actually had, like, a... A like stop a, moment. A, like, a stop moment, and the audience was like, oh, She went there. Shit. Like, it's happened. Yeah. And in Ireland, we didn't have that same thing. No. But it was, like, but there was a point where we're... Ha- but, like, there was... I'm trying to think, like, it's, like, when we were just get serious with each other, and they're just, like... Ooh, like they've got they've gotten in this serious yeah like they're, they're having they, a, they're, they're, they're really talking they're really now. talking they're not they're not like it's not fun anymore it's not funny any, like it's not games mm, anymore yeah and you could feel them have that and that's they talk about these like oh your friendship's gotten this this mm. turn and it's the same thing really but it was the language that, like the Canadians got caught up in the language mm. Um, Whereas the Irish got caught, caught up with the, the, the seriousness, the, or the, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and it was interesting too because like our promotion had to change because in Canada it worked perfectly. It was like I I didn't know I was gay before I dated. Like I shouldn't say it like that. Like it's trivial, but it was like the, all the promotion was much more about like um, those serious moments. Like like I was teased for being I was gay. Teased for being gay. Yeah, before right. I even knew myself. And or, in Canada, that was like, mm, or in like, bi- like mm-hmm. bitch is equivalent to a female dog. Yeah, and it was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Ireland, they're like, eh. Huh. So, like, but if I think if in Ireland we'd had like cunt and fake hag have chat, they'd be like, great. <laughs> like, that, that we like understand what that is. You should have that on buttons. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> and I you think should have, you should have like cunt and fag buttons, yeah. just like whatever. Honestly, and, yeah. that, and I we think might. That, that might be the way to go you because. Thank you. Uh, honestly, making buttons a huge pain in the ass. But I know, you know, I know. thanks for nothing. But uh, <laughs> but like yeah, like that. And, and it's interesting because I think it's it's like you know we're a much more PC culture. Yeah, we are yeah. so much more delicate about like language. PC or like live in a bubble world sometimes. Have you, have you guys <laughs> performed it anywhere not Toronto aside from Dublin? Like any other community? No. Because I'm kind of curious about whether or not that's a Canadian thing or whether it's a Toronto thing. I think it, uh, I, I think know. I think in Toronto it's heightened yeah. for sure. I think, but you know, I think yeah, and I think it's tough too that you've also only performed in safe places, right? So, and yeah. uh, I don't know how interested I actually am in performing it in unsafe spaces in the sense of if you're not willing to like if you don't fundamentally think women's rights matter mm-hmm. or queer rights matter. Then us yelling at each other is just going to be like, yeah, I agree. No, like, yeah, like, yeah, then what's yeah. then? Then it's um, it kind of is a show that is meant for people that are ready to have the harder conversations, mm-hmm. which is the minutia, mm-hmm. right. right? Like, it what is okay and isn't okay is right. a minutia conversation, um, and it's really I think we come down to it's about intent, mm-hmm. and intent matters. Right. Um, and like the only straight character or uh, male character, straight male character, is an ally. Like, uh, like it's like yes. he is not the problem right he is an ally and I think but and then, and then I think that this maybe is almost maybe I'm saying too much here with this but like <clears throat> the fact that we shut him down as an ally I think <laughs> is very Toronto well, loved it I think, <laughs> yeah which is interesting Toronto loved it and Aaron was like come on but I think it, I think <laughs> it's, really? for Toronto it's super poignant is the yeah. fact that people don't want to hear what they don't want to hear right yeah. like right. when what people sometimes want to like bitch to bitch and sometimes people have super strong opinions about things that they don't want an answer to or, yeah. and I think too right now everyone's a little sick of the allies voice like it's like no no just listen no we're good yeah yeah and I think you know, talk about just being in slightly different places too, right? Yeah. Like, you know, in, in in like all cultures, like, you know, maybe that the, the way that in Ireland you can speak so freely puts them in an, an advantage 
Uh, yeah. But also, you know, gay marriage has it's only been legal for like two years there, and only mm-hmm. a year well when we were there. So in some ways, they're behind, right? And yeah. I think so. It's it's not about good or bad or right and wrong. It's about what brings where for where you're at. And I think for Toronto, um, it was much more like Ooh, language, right? Yeah, like this language exists, and we do do this, like because we mm-hmm. did do that, and it's it is the private conversations. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've certainly had friends be like, those words just shouldn't exist. I'm like, but they do. And we say them to each other yeah. and you can pretend that they don't, but we do. And there, you can say, don't reclaim that word, get rid of that word. But we do reclaim, like we do, like, yeah. so, yeah, it's, you know, and in Ireland, it's much more like less about the reclaiming thing so much as like, yeah, we're all just going to say it. Yeah. And I have a feeling Scotland will be more similar. And certainly I was in Australia last year. That is also very true there. Mm. Um, it's funny how I, I got so offended in Australia all the time and I swear <laughs> like crazy and I was like you're not allowed to call me a cunt fuck you <laughs> he's allowed to call me a cunt but you're I'm not not you, know, you. not you and mm-hmm. it's you know but yeah I know any other community I don't know mm-hmm. I, I feel like I am not interested in dealing with people who are still dealing with basic homophobia right. and misogyny <clears throat> if that's where you're at then you need to go and like you need to go take ten steps back and rewatch the yeah. the Laramie Project. You know what I mean? Like yep. you need to watch you know the Crucible and decide if you really hate sluts. Like yeah. you're you're in a different place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this uh, show is not for like the people who who are Will and Grace who would watch like Will and Grace and like Jack's funny because he's so gay. Yeah, like right. like who who don't I actually think it's so cutting it's edge. So <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. for them at this point mm, yeah. yeah yeah it was for us <laughs> yeah. we, and we did it and if you think about it we've done it for two queer play festivals mm-hmm. playwright festivals and then in an improv theater super left wing improv theater and then and, in, then, in a th- and then in a and then a theater festival so super gay things all across the board and women and also the company I work for is very female like driven yeah. so it's like very safe spaces very like this is for you mm-hmm. and I have a feeling in this circumstance as well we'll be in a mm-hmm. similar boat although it'll be interesting it'll be also general audiences but it's theater audiences so yeah. I don't know it, it's interesting I we certainly like I know your partner's family came and they were certainly not theater people but they were not homophobic people mm-hmm. not necessarily yeah. people that have been exposed to that kind of stuff but they loved it really had a good laugh and I think it made them think and I'm like that's perfect if yeah. you're like I love my gay son and his partner, but also I don't really see plays and I don't know that I'm really, I don't have the language to talk about it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let us do that talking for you and we'll make you laugh on the journey. But if you're like not quite sure if you hate people that are different than you, uh, why are you at a theater festival? (laughs) I I think one of the like strongest points for me in the journey of this show has been knowing that uh, in talking to people after the show, that there are a number of people who have seen it who are not theater goers, so much to say that they had never seen theater in their mm. lives, and they walked out of it really enjoying it, and we changed their perception of what mm. theater is or could be. Mm, okay. um, and, and you know, living in that place of non-traditional theater, but still being definitely theater, um, I think was definitely strength of the show and I'm proud of that yeah awesome it was great thank you you guys it's been a lot it's been a lot of fun thank you absolutely